Hey guys, Brian. Uh, this is now day nine of the Angry Bird Collection Showcase. Um, have five cards here for you. I've themed this one the oversized um, edition, I guess you can say. Um, and I have my standard catalog here for you so I can accurately describe each of the cards because um, I'm not all too familiar with the oversized ones myself, so this will be a lesson for both me and you. So this is the 1936 Wheaties issue. Uh, this is a Series 4. Um, and I have the... Actually, sorry. This is Series 3. Um, this is actually cut off from the side of a Wheaties box. As you can see, it's just a cardboard. Um, cut out here. So I'll read the uh, description for you here for a second. Alright, so this is consisting of 12 unnumbered cards. This set is... This set is similar in size 6 inch by 6 and a quarter inch with frame and designed to the Wheaties of the previous year, 1935, but is known as the fancy frame with printed name and data because the cards are also the cards also include a few printed words describing the player. Um, that's a, a piece of the information that was cut out. Um, oh, actually, it's actually right here. Sorry. Um, so it says Hank Greenberg, 1935. The glare sucks here. I'm just going to read it to you. It says, Hank Greenberg, home run champion, 1935 Detroit Tigers. It has an image of him leaping um, to catch a ball and then sort of facsimile autograph here. The camera does not do it justice at all. I wish I can get a better camera. Um, but the the orange in the background here is just super, super nice. Um, it's about as good as I'll get it, but Take my word for it. Nice card. Um, this next one here, let me actually look it up in the catalog before I tell you what it's about. It's only taking a second. <clears throat> uh, I will recommend any vintage collector um, to get a standard catalog. This is the one I have. Um, any year would do because the information doesn't really change all too much. You can get this from like Barnes & Noble for like, well, it's pretty expensive, like 45 bucks. Um, see how thick the book is. Um, but it's definitely worth it. it. tells you all you need to know about your cards, how much they're worth, um, etc. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm even finding issues um, <clears throat> that I didn't know existed. Um, in the book, so it's a great reference tool. Okay, so what are we looking at? Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Okay. So um, this is actually a Detroit Tigers team card um, from 1936. These are classified as the R311s. Um, this is the leather finish, so if you take this card out of here, disregard this price point. This is just the sticker on the, the case. I couldn't take it off. <clears throat> but if you take it out and actually feel it, um, it feels like leather. Um, it's, it's really just like a photograph. Um, but Greenberg is here. He's actually right here. Um, in the Tiger photo, uh, this is when they won the pennant. I think maybe even the World Series. I don't know. But there's, I mean, the whole team's on here. Um, and on the end of the other same row is Charlie Garinger. Um, right there. Uh, so this is a great card. Let me tell you about this one. Um, catalog says... Uh, this set of 15 unnumbered cards issued as a premium in 1936 is distinctive because of its uneven leather-like surface. The card measures 6 inch by 8 inch and display a facsimile autograph, well, not in this case. Um, on the black and white photo surrounded by the plain border, these cards are unnumbered and include individual player photos, multiplayer photos, and team photos of 1935 pennant winners. So, um, that's from this. Um, there's also, Greenberg also has two more cards in the, um, 1936 R311s, um, another team photo in the glossy finish type, 
Um, and then there's also him by himself swinging, uh, which I have both of them, so you'll see those later. Um, but this is definitely the more valuable and the most rare. Um, this is the leather finished team. Uh, this video's taking a while. All right, let me look up these next ones real quick. Okay. Um, so I'll show you. I'll show you the card, and I'll redo the description again. So this is um, a seven by ten of Hank Greenberg. Um, the 1946 to 49 Sports Exchange All Star Picture. Um, this is probably I think taken out of some sort of magazine. Um, so this is. Uh, another picture of him leaping here. Um, and then on the bottom it says, first baseman outfielder of the T Detroit Tigers record holder in almost every batting department. And down here has facts and figures. So, his birthday, his nationality... <laughs> they say his nationality is Jewish. Um, don't really understand that one, but it sort of gives you a, uh, an idea of the uh, knowledge of what nationalities were back then, I suppose. Um, his height, weight, is served in the U.S. Army. He, uh, batting and throwing preferences, his eye and hair color, and he, who he was married to. So, kind of goes into some weird stats here, but um, really cool card. If you can even classify it as a card, I think it's a card. Uh, and let me read, you, let, let me read uh, what this is here. Um, so this is produced and sold originally at 50 cents per series, by The Trading Post, one of the first card collector's publications. Over a period which spanned several years in the late 1940s, this 113-card set was issued in 12 series. Most of the series were, no were 9 cards each, printed in black and white, unnumbered, blank-backed, and 7 by 10 format. This first 27 cards carry no series designation, but were advertised as Series 1A and 1B and Series 2. Series 3 features 11 cards and is printed in sepia tones rather than black and white. The fourth series is also unmarked, blah, 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 blah. So, Grimber's all only in series 1A and 1B. I'll show you, I'll, I have the, uh, the other one here for you. Actually, this is 1A, but it's not classified. Uh, but down at the bottom of the other one, it says series 1B. Actually, wait. Maybe they're maybe he's just both in series one B. The catalog only gives him series one B. All right, I'll keep reading. Um, the photos are labeled as originating in the International News Service. Um, that's stated here. International News Photo. Um, most of the same players and photos appearing in the same set also found the Sports Exchange mini baseball miniature set, which is also in, but I don't have. Um, because this is one of the first baseball card set issues after World War II, it contains cards of several players not found in other issues. The card carries W603 designation in the American card catalog, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right, so this is the Series 1B. So it has facts and figures down here, and then, here, you guys get a bonus today, actually. This is also Series 1B, but you can tell that the facts and figures, sorry, this is a piece of tape down here, um, is blank, so it gives you an opportunity to sort of fill them in there. Um, here, I'll actually take this out. So, I don't... I, I never, I've never taken this out of the holder, but or the the plastic here. But it says something about it was a standout first baseman with Detroit, now with Pittsburgh. Um, and these hole punches are actually um, original to the card. Someone did not punch these holes in. 
um, the cards came with both holes punched and non-holes punched. So, again, I look at these two. I believe I got this one only for like 90, or I got this one for 99 cents. This one I got for like 60 bucks, because they're a little, they was a little more rare at the time. This one is a complete steal. Um, so yeah, these two are pretty cool. The fifth card I'll show you, um, alright, let me, sorry, this video is taking fucking forever. Um, I just want to make sure I get all this information right. Uh, ba 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 Let me see. Nope. I'm really trying here. Hold on. Sorry, I know you guys are probably like quit the video by now. Oh, found it. Alright. So, the Cleveland Indians, over the course of three years, 48, 49, and 50, issued these uh, picture packs, and this was at the point where Hank Greenberg was actually an executive from the Indians organization, so they issued one of him, too. Uh, I believe this is from... 1950? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Hold on. I suck right now. 49. 49. 50. 49. 49. Alright, I am I guess this is... Whatever. Let's just say this is not from 1950. <clears throat> okay, so this says here... Similar in form to previous year issues, the 65 by 9 inch black and white player poses on a white background, affects only autograph on the front. Backs are blank. A number of photos are checklisted here alphabetically as possible in context, blah, blah, blah. Alright, so, just a big premium. Um, him looking sharp in his wide lapel suit. Alright. Jesus Christ. Okay, so, you guys are... <laughs> this is a fucking wreck. Um, this is, uh, you guys... Um, if you've been uh, keeping up with the series, I talked about the 1939 Gaudi Premium R303B. The black and whites, so this is the sepia. Um, graded SGC 20. Um, and then the back is this just thing. But, yep. Really cool card. Actually, you know what? Let me, let me look this one up too. I'll tell you guys about this. If you haven't left already. It just shows like the sheer vastness of the card collecting universe. Um, I mean, the fact that to look up six cards and talk about them has taken me 15 minutes already. Or 14 minutes. It's just... I can't even fathom. Um, but again, if you're a serious collector and you have cards that are in this... Or, I mean, of course you have cards that are in this, what am I saying? If you have cards that you want to find out more about or catalog, I recommend getting this book. Uh, Okie dokie. Alright. Um, although larger um, than the R303As, the photos in this 24-player set are identical to the R33A's issue same year, and the format is set unchanged. The designation, blah, 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 can be found in black and white and sepia in terms of backs printed in brown. Alright, so we knew that. Um, 
So yeah, that's pretty much it. Sorry this video took so long. I did not anticipate having so much trouble with the catalog, but try again next time, I suppose. Thanks for watching.